All right, lesson 5.6, writing systems of equations. Today we are not solving, so we get a little bit of a break from solving, and we are going to focus on word problems that need a system in order to be solved. Uh, there are a few different types, and so today we're just going to look at the four main types that you're going to see most commonly in Algebra 1. All right, first question. A rectangle is 7 inches longer than it is wide. If the perimeter is 72 inches, how long is the rectangle? Write a system of equations that could be used to find the length L and the width W of the triangle. So just really quickly, um, when you guys are solving systems either in real life or on a test or, you know, whatever, more than likely it's not going to tell you to write a system. Like that's all you're going to get for this problem. Like you're not going to get anything else and you're just supposed to be figuring out the length and the width. So how do you know that you even need a system? If it doesn't tell you to use a system, how do you know you need a system? All right, here's how you know. You're listening. It's important. You need a system to solve if you have two unknowns that you need to find. All right? I don't know the length, and I also don't know the width. If there are two unknowns, I need two equations. All right? If there are two unknowns I'm supposed to find, I need two equations. And that's a huge concept in, in that uh, in the future. It's not going to tell you to write a system, but you need to write a system in order to get it done. All right, let's go. A rectangle is seven inches longer than it is wide. Oops, um, sorry. A rectangle is seven inches longer than it is wide. So I'm going to write an equation from just this one sentence. All right. Well, we read the words a rectangle is seven inches longer than it is wide, and I know I'm using L, and I know I'm using W. So there are actually a bunch of different ways we can write this. I always like to ask myself um, to start with what's bigger. So what's bigger, the length or the width in this case? Well, it says it's longer, so the length is going to be bigger. So I'm going to say L equals. Now, I don't know the width, but I know that whatever the width is, if I add 7 to it, that's going to be the length. Right? The length is 7 inches more than the width. It's 7 inches longer than it is wide. So here's my equation that represents that first sentence. So you notice how it's an equation, has an equal sign, and I got my L and my W. All right. Second part, perimeter. All right, if the perimeter is 72 inches, how long is the rectangle? You should definitely know the perimeter of a rectangle. The formula is P equals 2W plus 2L. This is something that you learned years ago. Um, it is something that we expect you to know at this point. It's not on your formula chart in Algebra 1. It's just something you should know. All right, so the perimeter is 72 inches. All we got to do here is use the 2W plus 2L equals 72. All right, we came up with two equations using the same two variables, and we could go ahead and solve. Now, if we wanted to solve this, FYI, you'd probably want to use substitution. But like I said, we're not solving today. Problem two. Uh, Mark has $4.95 in quarters and dimes. He has three times as many dimes as quarters. Write a system, blah, blah, blah. Uh, off on the side, if you guys would take a second, this is what we commonly say is called a coin problem. And when we do coin problem, we always want to know the value of our coins in decimals. So I'm going to do the four main coins. We're going to say a penny is written as 0 0.01. A nickel is written as 0 0.05. A dime is written as 0.10. And then finally, a quarter is written as 0.25. All right. Now, in these problems, it does not give you these numbers. It doesn't tell you to use these numbers. You're the one who has to bring it into the equation. All right, and here's how you're going to do it. If you ever have a problem dealing with money and you're not sure how to set it up, ask yourself two questions. Ask yourself the two questions, how many, and then also how much. How many and how much. And the how much question is always dealing with money. And this will help you get it set it up, right? How much money. Okay, so I know that on the bottom, I'm going to have this being equal to 4.95. And how many? Okay, how many coins? Okay, I'm not sure, but I guess it's going to deal with this sentence right here. So he has three times as many dimes as quarters. So which one does he have more of? That's the way I like to set mine up. Three times as many dimes as quarters. So he has more dimes. And if we know the number of quarters he has, if we multiply times three, that'll be the dimes, right? Three times as many dimes as quarters, so I'm going to say three cubed. All right, the red equation, the how much equation. Yesterday, 
when we talk about setting up these equations, you guys, we always talk about money. I should have money. If there's money here, there should be money here, there should be money here. I should have three terms that deal with money. So I'm going to write point O five, not O five, sorry, point ten D. Where did the point ten come from? Why is it with D? Yeah, you guessed it, right? We're talking about dimes in this problem, right? And we have money, so we needed a money coefficient on that D. So what do you think is going to come next with the Q? Yeah, it's going to be 0.25Q, right? Because we're dealing with dimes and quarters in this problem. All right, and that's how we would set this up. We've got D and Q in both equations, and we'd have two separate equations that we would use to solve. Um, this one would also be solved using substitution, or at least that's how it's set up. All right, number three. One number x is three times as large as another number y. All right, so you've got this first statement here. Well, you've got the words x is, and that's my favorite, favorite combination to get because it means that we can write equals. The word is is equals, so I can write x equals, and that's really nice because I don't have to think about which is bigger. So x is, x equals, three times as large as another number y. It's just saying three times as large as y. Three times y, which we can just write 3y. My final equation here says their sum is 128. Don't overthink it. You should know sum means to add. So we're going to say x plus y, right? We're using the same variables, is equal to 128. Again, this problem would probably be used, or probably be solved using substitution. But we're not going to solve it today, like I said. Problem four, McKinney Boyd Theater sold 210 tickets and collected a total of $1,530 in ticket sales for the Sunday matinee of Peter Pan. Admission was $11 for adults and $5 for children. Write two equations that could be used to find the number of adult tickets A and the number of child tickets C. This is another problem where we're dealing with money. So I'm going to ask myself my two super useful questions of how many and also how much. I'm telling you, if you've got an equation that deals with money and you're not sure where to start, these two questions are so helpful. Well, how much money? Well, I like this. I can tell that this here is the total amount of money. So I feel pretty confident putting 1530 right here. And I've got money in this equation. I've got another equation that deals with money, right? $11 for adults, $5 for children. So I've got my money, money, money parts of this equation. So all those are going to go to the same equation, right? All of them are going to go in our red equation. Say $11 for adults plus $5 for children equals 1530. So we got money, 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 right? Dollars, dollars, dollars. Well, the only other number we haven't used yet is this 210. And that's the total tickets. So I guess I can write equals 210. But what equals 210? Okay, well, the ticket sales. But I have to use A and C. Remember, I have to use my same variables. So what, all we're going to say here is all the adult tickets A plus all the child tickets C are 210 tickets total. right? So we've got tickets, tickets, tickets. We kept those all together. And those are my two equations. All right. As you guys go forward writing your equations, remember, take your time, get two equations, and always use the same variables for both of your equations.